Grant us the courage to take risks for the sake of your kingdom. Help us to live lives that are worthy to you. Amen. Receive the words of forgiveness. Our God is light, and in God is real life. Our God has brightened our days with real hope and exposed every dark corner of our life with true forgiveness. The light of life is Christ Jesus, God's Son. Through Jesus, we can live in daily relationship with our Creator and know the joy of hope for eternity. Praise God for light and life. We are forgiven in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. And we join in our gathering hymn, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, hymn number 708. Our service this morning will be Holy Communion setting three, taken from our red hymn book. And uh, if you wish to follow along in the book, our service begins on page 138. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy One, we gather as your people, giving thanks that we can be together to hear your word, offer our prayers, and sing your praises. Draw us together in your love, that we may know you more deeply. Open our hearts to a deeper understanding of your will, and work within our lives, that we may produce the fruit of compassion. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. The book of Deuteronomy, Moses calls the people who are about to enter the promised land to renew the covenant God made with their ancestors. Through this covenant, God gives life and asks for obedience. God's commandments, commandment is neither burdensome nor too far off, but dwells in people's hearts. A reading from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. God will help you succeed in everything you do, in your own fertility, your livestock's offspring, and your land's produce, Everything will be great because God will once again enjoy doing good things for you just as God enjoyed doing them for your ancestors and because you will be obeying God's voice, keeping the commandments and regulations that are written in this instruction scroll and because you will have returned to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being. This commandment that I'm giving you right now is definitely not too difficult for you. It isn't unreachable. It isn't up in heaven somewhere so that you have to ask who will go up for us to heaven and get it for us so that we can hear it and do it. Nor is it across the ocean somewhere so that you have to ask who will cross the ocean for us and get it for us so that we can hear it and do it. Not at all. The word is very close to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart, waiting for you to do it. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. I invite you to please rise as we sing our gospel acclamation. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is challenged to explain what is involved in obeying the greatest commandment. He tells a parable rich in surprises. Those expected to show pity display hard hearts, while the lowly give and receive unexpected and lavish mercy. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, What is written in the law? How do you interpret it? The legal expert replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the legal expert, seeking self-justification, pressed Jesus further. And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, There was a traveler going down from Jerusalem to Jericho who fell prey to thieves. The traveler was beaten, stripped naked, and left half dead. Now it just so happened that a priest was also going down the same road. The priest saw the injured traveler lying beside the road, but passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot, saw the injured traveler, and crossed over to the other side of the road. A Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon the traveler, and filled with compassion, approached the traveler, 
dressed the wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then the Samaritan put the wounded person on a donkey, went straight to an inn, and there took care of the injured one. The next day, the Samaritan took out two full days' worth of wages and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of this person, and when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. So what do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the traveler who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who showed compassion. Jesus replied, go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Through your word, we pray that you would melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us. Amen. Please be seated. So this scripture reading is very familiar to many of us. And in this parable, we all want to be the Good Samaritan. And as, as people of faith, we want to be the person who shows compassion to those who need it. And for the most part, I believe that we are. Because I know you folks, you folks here in person, and, you, and many of you folks watching the live stream, I know you, and you have huge hearts. You love God, and you love each other. And the fact that you are here in person or watching on the live stream is evidence that you are people of deep faith and have a strong desire to continue growing in that faith, growing in your relationship with God, and growing in your relationship with each other. But I think we all know, if we're truly honest with ourselves, that we can also see ourselves in every person in this parable. There are times that we are the priest and the Levite. We see someone in need, and we cross over to the other side. And we may do this for multiple of reasons. We may be in a hurry to do something else that's super important, and we simply don't have the time. Or maybe we're hesitant to get into something that we don't know exactly what we're getting into. Or maybe we simply have nothing left to give anybody else because we've already given so much of ourselves to our family, our church, and other people around us in need. There are many times that we probably can identify with the traveler who was beaten up, robbed, and left by the side of the road. Now hopefully this hasn't literally happened to any of you, but maybe ourselves or someone we know has felt beaten up by a dysfunctional work environment or never-ending health concerns, or experiences of grief upon grief. Maybe we felt robbed of our independence, or our dignity, or are robbed of our future opportunities or dreams. So there have likely been times when we have felt left alone at the side of the road, forgotten by family members or friends, or maybe even our church. So really, this parable is about the human condition. And therefore, each and every one of us can likely identify with every person in this parable at different times in our lives. But regardless of who we are in this parable, the foundation of this parable is about love and relationship. And this parable illustrates the fruits or the results of love and relationship, and that's compassion. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I was reflecting on how I could do this better in my life, because I know when I'm not focusing on God as the center of my life as much as I should, I know that that means I don't have as much to give to the people around me 
as I would like to. So I was reminded of a prayer form that in the past has helped me stay connected with God. And so I have resolved to start using this prayer form on a regular basis to help keep that close connection or nurture a close connection with God. And I'm gonna share it with you in the hopes that you might be interested in also participating uh, in this prayer form with me. And I'm very interested, if you choose to do this, how it impacts your, your daily life. And so I'm gonna go through this kind of in a step-by-step. -step. Um, and I do have handouts that I am going to uh, leave in the back. I have a big 16 point uh, uh, font that I am, I am much more compassionate of people uh, with challenges with eyesight as my eyesight continues to decline at age 53, almost 54. So, and then I also have a smaller handout, but I've, I'll have lots of both if you want them. And for those folks watching on the live stream, this is actually already on our website. We have an excellent uh, person, uh, Jim Westman, that updates our website. And I emailed him yesterday at three with this information. Check the website before church and it's there. So thank you, Jim, you're amazing. So this uh, prayer form comes from a person named Ignatius of Loyola who was a contemporary of Martin Luther. So he lived from 1491 to 1556. So it's been around for centuries. Ignatius was a Spanish Catholic priest and theologian. And this form of prayer, the original name is called the examen of consciousness. Now this is not to be confused with an examination of conscience in which we beat up on ourselves. This form of prayer is an exploration of how God is present with us within the events and circumstances and feelings of our daily lives. And I've also heard this prayer method being called praying backward through your day, which is what I prefer to call it because to me it's way more descriptive. I'm glad I'm not the only one that needs a fan. I feel I'm in good company. Thanks, all you folks out there. So this is a very natural way to pray, because if you're like me, when my day comes to a close, either when I'm cleaning the kitchen after supper or watching TV, reading a book or doing something in the yard or going for a walk, bits and pieces of my day dart through my consciousness, my awareness. And sometimes thoughts or concerns about the next day also uh, flit through my mind. So this form of prayer is a way of recalling the events of the day in God's presence and of giving up those events to God in both thanksgiving and confession. And it's also a way we can give up to God our desires and concerns for tomorrow as well. So it helps us discover how God has been present with us and how we have responded to God's presence through the day. So the regular use of this form of prayer helps to nurture our growth in relationship to God, to self, and to others as we become more and more aware of God's presence throughout the day. So this prayer form follows a natural form of dialogue with someone we love and trust. I love you. I'm sorry. Help me. Be with me. Thank you. So here are the steps. We begin by intentionally placing ourselves in the presence of God by getting comfortable and perhaps lighting a candle. The next thing we do is remember that we are in God's presence. We're invited to recall our day as though we were watching a movie or looking through a photo album of the day. We can do this at the end of the day, or we can do it in the morning about the previous day. But it's very important that before we review our day, the idea is to remember who we are from God's point of view, precious children. 
So we begin with the words, I love you. As we go over the main points of our day, acknowledging that God has been with us without being rigid about it, we don't have to think about every moment of the day, just what comes to mind. We can think about what struck us, what was beautiful, what was challenging, or what wasn't clear, for example. So in other words, where was God, where was God's presence in the events and the feelings that we experience this day? Once we're finished that, we pause and be silent. We want to listen closely with our hearts. Where has God been at work in the day, or what might God be calling us to do or to be? So the fourth step is about acknowledging when we trip up. So we say we're sorry. And we ask for God's forgiveness and healing. And we can maybe even pray the particular events of this day that I most want healed is and give those to God. We trip up, we say we're sorry, we ask for forgiveness, we receive God's forgiveness. Step five is creating a game plan. We pray, help me, be with me. In sports, a good coach will always set aside time to look back over the week's game with our staff, and we can follow a similar game plan in our spiritual life. After reviewing our day, we can take a moment to think of what we can do differently tomorrow. We can try to come up with some simple way of growing in what we believe Christ is calling us to grow in. So for example, there are some days when I need more patience. So we keep this idea in mind and we try to recall it when we wake up the next day. Maybe we can write it on a sticky note or maybe it'll be a phrase or a scripture passage or maybe just a word like patience. We know that much of our day depends on those first moments when we wake up. So part of this game plan is trusting that God is with us and believing that God desires to give us this as gift. The final step is saying thank you. As we take a moment to give thanks to God for all the gifts of the day. And then we can name some of those gifts. Praying backward through our day isn't about pointing a magnifying glass and all the dirt in our lives and feeling bad about it. It's intended to be a joyful experience where we tell our story from our point of view with all its joys and difficulties and failings, but then we listen to God. And we allow God's presence to be revealed through God's wisdom and actions, which takes our flaws and failings into account and still manages to work wonders in our lives. And as a result, our memory is daily transformed by God's grace. So I invite you to join in this form of prayer with me and share your experiences with me. I'd be very interested to hear about them. Now, however it is that you choose to deepen and nurture your relationship with God, may it help you grow closer to God as we all continue to strive, as we all continue to strive to love God with all our heart, being, soul, and mind and love our neighbor as ourself. And may God's presence in your lives continue to strengthen you to be people of compassion as we reach out to a world in need. Amen. I'll invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day 
Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Hymn number 659. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers in the road. We are here to help each other walk the like for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace we long to hear. I will I'll invite you to be seated as we continue with an order of blessing for the delegates to the 2022 National Convention of our ELCIC, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Frederick, Deb, and Pastor Lynn, you have been chosen as delegates to the 2022 National Convention of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada to be held online July 15 and 16. We give thanks that you will represent our Saskatchewan Synod and region at this important gathering of our church. We join with you in hopeful expectation that this time of prayer, consultation, and decision-making will be a faithful witness to our church's mission and to the Christian faith. Will you join this gathering to serve the whole church? Will you seek the guidance of God as you join others in making decisions for the church? Will you bear the reconciliation of Christ as you work with others to determine the will of God for the future of the church? Will you share the Holy Spirit's joy in prayer and work together? If so, please say, Yes, and I pray that God will help and guide me. Yes, and I pray that God will help and guide me. People of God, will you support these delegates in prayer? And will you pray for the 2022 National Convention of the ELCIC? If so, please say, we will. I invite those of you who are present and those of you online to extend your hands forward in blessing. Frederick, Deb, and Pastor Lynn, we bless you as you go in the name of God to serve the church and all the people of God in the prayer and work of this convention. The light of Christ shine in you. The spirit of Christ guide you. God bless you and all who gather in this work together. Amen. And I think uh, we could maybe give them a round of applause to show our support in that way. We'll continue in prayer. Prayer petitions will end with God of grace, and the congregation is invited to respond by saying, hear our prayer. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. 
Good and gracious God, you've placed our, your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. Bless the ministry of the National Convention and all the delegates that they may hear your voice and guidance for the mission of this church in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. We pray for wisdom and guidance for our church leadership on the national, synodical, and local level. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope, where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, and healing in illness. We pray for those in need, for Ivy Zur in the Pasqua Hospital, for Janet Gallagher in the Pioneer Transitional Care Unit, for Gertrude Prince in the Wascana Rehabilitation Center, for Doris Davis in Kipling, and Tom Irwin in Hamilton. We also pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. We especially pray for the well-being of the refugee family in Mozambique. We pray for compassionate hearts for those in the decision-making process regarding the future of this family. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Please join me in the offering prayer. Creating God, thank you for your world of beauty, abundance, and blessing. Use our gifts to bring justice and healing to all people. As we offer our gifts, we also offer our lives in your service, that we may do your will. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. So I'd like to give our online viewers an opportunity to commune uh, first. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ, sorry, the blood of Christ shed for you. And at this time, I'd like to invite our communion assistants forward and usher as we prepare for the communion distribution. If you are new to Christ Lutheran Church, know that we have an open table communion and you're welcome to commune with us. And a quick reminder, if you can fill out a communion card, uh, it, you'll find that in the pew ahead of you and that's simply for our records. I invite you to be seated. And we can begin singing the communion hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling, hymn number 608.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace from now to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know the life in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the blessing. Go from here as witnesses of what you have seen and heard. Share God's love with all those you meet. Bring hope to all those who are in despair. Live lives of gratitude and praise. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit be within you and among you until we meet again. Amen. Go in peace, inspired by Christ, to love and serve. Thanks be to God. <laughs>